This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we'll show you how to pipe buttercream roses. The video is broken down into segments so you can rewatch or skip ahead as desired. We're gonna cover how to make your color, the bags and tips that we'll be using, the techniques we're gonna use to make a rose, and how to use those techniques to build your blossom. And finally, we'll finish up by piping them on a flower nail. We're gonna get started by making the color for our roses. And we have just a couple of ounces of simple or American style buttercream in our bowl. And we're gonna use liquid gel food colorings. And we're gonna use two of them. So I've got some neon bright pink and some violet. And I've got a little bit of each squeezed out here because I don't wanna make too dark of a shade. And I'm gonna go for a slightly mauve tone. So I'm using mostly pink, a couple of nice big specks, and just a little bit of purple. We'll give this a mix around and see what it looks like. Try to go really sparingly with the purple. I just kind of want a hint of it. So I might just need to add a tiny bit more pink to get this to read more mauve than say lilac. But it's coming along nicely. I think I just want it to be a little bit darker. One of the great things about roses is once you learn how to make them, you can really mix it up by making them a whole bunch of different colors because they come in a lot of different colors naturally. And you can also make some fun, cool fantasy colors as well. But I think that's gonna be a really nice shade of pink. You can see it just has that little hint of purple in it. So it's not a true pink, it's just a little bit mauve in terms of that tone. And that's gonna be perfect for making some beautiful, classic, traditional roses. So the bags and tips we're gonna use for this flower, really simple, easy. There's just two of them. We've got two 12 inch decorator bags loaded up with frosting and our tips. We're gonna use a 104 tip. There we go. For our petals, you can see that's a nice petal tip. And I've got my mauve color in that. And then we're also going to use a number 12 tip. So a nice plain round tip, you can see there. And I've just got some extra buttercream that was left over from another project. This is gonna make up the center of our rose and you're not gonna see it. So it's a great place to use up excess color from other projects, or say you mixed a shade and you didn't really like it. Put it in that bag, you're not even gonna see it. You can even use excess white or extra of the same color, but I just like it as a good way to use up any little extra bits from other projects. And it's a great way to use them up and no one sees them or knows they're there but you. So it's a nice little tip if you've got extra buttercream on hand is use it for the centers of flowers that won't be seen. Anything that needs a little mound in there. But we're just using these two bags. We've got our number 12 and our number 104 and we're ready to go. So let's talk about the two different techniques that we're gonna to use to create our roses. It's actually pretty simple. It becomes more complex when we talk about exactly how we're holding the bag and exactly what we're doing in each spot, but we're using the two basic same things, right? So we're doing a cone on the inside and then we're pulling petals on the outside to create this rose. So when we're making our cone, it's important that you're holding your nail straight up and down and then you're holding that bag straight up and down. And what we're gonna do is squeeze a nice size dot. So you wanna hold still above the surface and get a nice dot going and then pull up slowly and then give it a little um, quick motion there to create that peak. And you can see we've got a nice little cone of frosting there. It's gonna be easy to um, pipe our rose petals on it, get good attachment, and we've got a nice size there. And the important part here is you want it to be just taller than the opening of the tip that you're using to create your petals. So you want it to be kind of like one and a half, right, so times the height of that opening. So not too big, not too small. That's gonna give you room to put those layers of petals on and also give them some nice support. So that's a nice little guide is use that tip and make sure that your cones aren't too large. And then the other thing we're gonna do with our petal tip is pull these nice kind of soft arc shaped petals. 
and we'll vary it up just a little bit for the one in the center, but for the most part, what we're doing is we're taking the bag and we're pulling towards ourselves, and we're pulling in a nice arc shaped motion. So we just wanna imagine that we're going like that all the way around when we're doing it. So we're gonna keep that same kind of arc shaped motion for all of those petals that are opening up on our rows. We'll do something just a little bit different on the center one, it's basically just holding it in place and spinning. But for the actual petals that are opening up on those roses, we're gonna keep the same technique for every single one. So it's actually a very simple set of techniques that we're gonna to use to create some really beautiful roses. So let's talk about how we use those techniques we just talked about to build our roses. We're gonna start out with our 12 tip and we're gonna use it to pipe that center mound, right? So we're gonna be on our flower nail. You're gonna start with that tip up off the surface, pipe a nice big dot. When you get to the size dot you want in terms of width, that's when you'll start pulling up and start out slow and then just give it a nice little fast pull at the end when you're ready to finish it off. And that should give you a nice sloped mound that's gonna be perfect for building your rose on. So once we have that base built, we're gonna go on to our center petal. Right? And this is the one that's in the middle. It's gonna be closed and tight and look like an unopened petal in the middle of our rose. So what we wanna do is hold that 104 tip so that it's lined up with the angle of that mound and it's just gonna be kind of resting against the surface. The top skinny end is gonna be just past the tip top of our mound of frosting, right? So we want it slightly above of it so it's kind of overlapping the top, right? We don't want it completely lined up with that point because that's gonna make a nice big opening then in the center. We want it to look closed and tight. So if you just slide it up so that tip, the top end of it is just above that mound, it's gonna be perfect. When you spin then and you make a full rotation, it's gonna make a closed inside petal, right? So fat end is pointing downwards, we're lined up with that angle, we're just kind of resting on that crone of frosting, and the skinny end, that point, is above the top of our little mound there in the center. We're gonna do a full rotation with our flower nail, and when we come back to the beginning, you're going to overlap the start of your petal and pull down the cone. That's gonna finish it, it's gonna give it that twist around, and wrap down of that center of a rose, right? And make a really nice, beautiful petal. It'll also mean that the end of your petal isn't blocking your motion when you go to put your other petals on, right? So important thing is that the top of the tip is above the top of your cone of frosting. Make that full rotation and pull down at the end so that you're not blocking or impeding your motion when you do your other petals. Let's talk about the next steps. So for our first row of petals, we'll have that center one on. We're gonna line that tip up so that the top end is pointing up, right? So the skinny end is gonna be pointing straight up instead of laying across the top now. The fat end is gonna be nested down underneath that bottom edge of that center petal, right? So we're gonna start with that tip straight up and down. We've moved it down the side of this cone just a little bit, and then we're gonna pull some of those little arced or arched petals towards ourselves as we twist our or spin our flower nail. And that's gonna lay them on the sides and give us little petals that are kind of straight up and down, right? So if we do three of those, that should be enough to enclose the center. If you find you need more or less, do whatever works, right? To some extent, it depends on the size and width of the cone that you've piped. But usually three is enough for that first row. Once we have our first row in, we're going to change the angle that we hold that opening, right, of our tip. And you'll see I've got the fat end now nested underneath that first row of petals, right? So we've moved it further down the cone. And the top edge, instead of pointing straight up, is going to be tilted out. So instead of going straight up and down, we're gonna tilt out. So think away from your cone. This is gonna allow those flower petals to open up. So the first one is pointed across or in. Second, right, that first row of petals is gonna be straight up and down. And then our second row is gonna be tilted out. So we get this nice gradual opening effect. And then we're gonna pull the same arc-shaped petals. It'll probably take maybe five or six to get around. Do whatever works for you, right? Um, try not to get too 
um, static or set on the number of petals it'll take to get around each one because every once in a while you'll get some that are different, right? And this should take us about half to three quarters of the way down our cone of frosting doing that second row. You might need to uh, slide in a third or fourth. It depends on how tall you made them. So you're just going to repeat step four as needed. And every time you do it, pull that angle a little bit wider, a little bit wider, a little close to being flat against the surface. And that'll give you that nice gradual opening of your roses, right? So just keep going until you reach the bottom of the nail and you have a nice finished blossom. So now that we've talked about it, let's go ahead and get our flower nail out and pipe some roses. So let's start piping our roses. I've got my number 12 bag. I'm gonna hold it straight up and down and make sure you're also holding your flower nail straight up and down because if one of them's at an angle, it's really gonna change how things go, right? So everybody's straight up and down. I am up off the surface. I'm gonna squeeze and let that frosting form a nice ball. And then I'm just gonna pull up nice and slow and give it a little quick motion at the end. And you can see that gives me a wonderful cone of frosting. I've got a nice gentle slope to it. It's gonna be perfect for applying my petals. Once I'm ready to go, I'm going to get my bag ready for this first center petal, right? Remember, it's gonna be wrapped, so it's a little bit different. I'm going to take it, and you can see I've got my bag at a 45 degree angle in relationship to the surface of the flower nail. It's pointed towards, right, my right shoulder, the back of the bag. So you can see I'm lined up, so I'm in this kind of perfect spot. And then I'm just gonna take the opening of that tip and kind of line it up towards the back of my cone of frosting, right? So that when I spin, the frosting's coming out, I'm turning the other direction, and you can see it's really easy then to lay on that center petal because spinning it does all the work for you. You just have to give it a nice gentle squeeze and turn as you go and you'll get a lovely little closed inside petal for your roses. So basically, if you line it up perfectly, right, right against the cone of frosting, the opening of the tip is towards the back. When you spin, right, if you're touching, if that um, skinny end is just above the top of that cone, you're gonna get that nice closed inside petal. So once we've got our center petal on there, we're gonna start working on that first row. So if we remember from our little building our blossom section, we're gonna hold it so that the opening of this tip is straight up and down. I'm gonna put the fat end so that it is right underneath, right? The bottom of that center petal, the opening straight up and down, and I'm just gonna pull those nice arc shapes as I turn my nail, right, to get those first row petals that are straight up and down. You can see we have that closed center, we have those three petals now that are wrapped around, and we're in really good shape. When I wanna do my second row, I'm gonna go from holding that opening straight up and down to just giving the bag a little bit of a turn in my hand. So now it's slightly pointing out. So the opening skinny end is going out away from our cone of frosting. I'm gonna move the fat end so that it's nested underneath that first row and a little further down my cone. And then just start pulling those nice little soft arc shapes towards myself. And you can see that opens up those petals and gives us the effect of a nice, beautiful, blossoming rose. And then I just wanna continue as needed. So open the angle up a little wider, move further down. And for me, this third row of petals is gonna do it. I'll be all the way at the bottom of my cone. And that's typically where I wanna be. If you made yours a little tall the first few times, don't worry about it, just put in an extra row. But you can see, we use the same technique for all those petals except for the center one. We get a nice, beautiful, open rose, and it looks absolutely lovely. And as promised, you can't even see that center cone, so it doesn't matter what color it is, right? So it's a great way to use up some extra frosting.
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.